Record. Okay. I'm. Oh, okay. Noted. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna edit out that part. <laughs> okay. So, um, <clears throat> hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel today. Another interview with a TOEFL tutor. Today, I've invited my very good friend Martin Chan, who is a TOEFL teacher in Chengdu, China. He's been teaching TOEFL for about 10 years. Uh, right now, he's an independent TOEFL, IELTS, Pearson, whatever tutor. He helps with a lot of tests. And he's also worked for some of the major test prep companies in China. He's got a ton of insights, and he knows a lot about how the test prep industry works in China. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, I will mention, if you want to get in touch with him, I will put his contact information down in the video description below. So... Martin, welcome to the channel. Very glad to be included, Mike. How are you doing? I am doing fantastic. Now, the viewers don't know, we've actually been talking like offline for like an hour. And <laughs> the insights that you've already shared with me are fantastic. So like, I'm, I'm really looking forward to you actually telling this to the whole world. Um, okay. Because like TOEFL prep in China and the test prep industry in China is unlike anything else in in the world like no country is is quite like china i've actually lived and worked in china a little bit in the past um mm -hmm. and that's actually where i taught toefl for the first time which most people don't know maybe not even you yeah yeah i don't know that you didn't tell that's me. A, that's a story for another day because today we're talking about you but i'll give my biography one day um okay so here's here's a question i want to ask uh i read uh, an article from 10 years ago it was about toefl in china and it was called, um, the, the headline of the article was The Test That Changed China. And it was all about how significant the TOEFL test was and how it helped to grow the, um, the, 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 the movement for people to study abroad. And it was just instrumental. And so it was a big deal, like all through the history. And then mm -hmm. Earlier this year, when ETS had to announce like the enhanced TOEFL and all the changes, what did they do? They flew out all their executives and management and the, the, the CEO of the company to China, where they did like mm -hmm. the first official announcement. Pretty big deal. Yes, I guess is. China's a big yes. market. You can is, say that. Is TOEFL still like the big number one test in China for English? Is that still like the big one? Okay, so um, I can't vouch for the number one, you know, uh, way of saying it, but uh, it's definitely like the top gears. And here in China, especially after I've been teaching it, I've been involved in this business. Um, TOEFL it has already has has always been, you know, number one or number two, you know, competing with IELTS these years. So if one is, if you want to ask if TOEFL is still the number one. I can say yes, like 50%, or mm -hmm. no, like it shares credit with the IELTS. And recently, most recently, like these past one or two years, maybe IELTS uh, is taking advantage because, you know, like in a, in a, in a, on a, on a difficulty level, IELTS shares some, you know, uh, like, a, what's that, what's that saying called? Um, it's kind of easier, kind of okay. easier. Okay. On, on the difficulty level. So a lot of students might, may want to take an, an IELTS instead of, but it's still a big deal because whenever you want to talk about going to study, uh, going, to, going to study in uh, un universities in the US or Canada or uh, let's say Japan, uh, TOEFL is still the number one option. Okay. So, yeah. so TOEFL is still a pretty big deal. IELTS is maybe kind of catching up. Now, in the rest of the world, some of the like other like, tests are really taking hold. I'm thinking particularly the Pearson test uh, mm -hmm. and the Duolingo English test. Yep. Are those kind of catching on in China? Uh, I would say they did. Uh, uh, they did ca caught up uh, in a three year of the uh, pandemics mm -hmm. in the past three years because, you know, they've been there. They allow students to do the online testing and then it's going to be really like it's easier, of course, and then they're more affordable, and then they also are recognized by lots of the uh, uh, fine universities. Mm -hmm. 
not top, but fine universities. So okay. that gives a lot of students with a mediocre level of English uh, um, a better choice or a mm -hmm. more uh, more choices. So you can say that. And also uh, during the pandemics, of course, um, lots of the um, TOEFL or IELTS testing sites are shutting down. So mm -hmm. uh, the online tests uh, are, you know, being advertised even, um, I mean, uh, without presidency, right? So okay. that's that's the that's the that's the that's the only reason I guess they are they showed up they showed up, mm -hmm. but after after the uh twenty twenty two I mean at the end of the twenty twenty two or the beginning of the, this year, um, both Pearsons and the you know the Duolingo market have been declined. I okay. mean it's notice it's noticeable it's notice noticeable. Mm. Oh, so there, that's that's something I haven't heard from a lot of other countries. So you're saying there is like a noticeable kind of decline in interest among those tests in China recently? I can't say for sure. Like I don't, don't do this statistics on the yeah. market, but I, I'm I'm saying it only based on uh, how many students I've been taught. I've been teaching, you know, and who who, who whose whose aim is to take the PTE or you know Duolingo. Yeah. It's like close to none. Okay, but. IELTS still trending, TOEFL yeah. trending. Yeah, that's okay. how I would say it. Okay. And my, I mean, obviously we don't know the stats, but like back when that first article was written, I think it was like 2012, like I'm 99% yeah. sure that China was the biggest market for TOEFL. Now it's probably India. I'm pretty sure about that, but it sounds like China is still like a huge market for, for TOEFL. Both from like you know the number of students and the business and the money that's being made. China is still, if not number one, still yeah. the you know top three. I guess. I mean, yeah. you can say that China has a really big market and market and lots of students, lots of you know parents, yeah, want to send their kids out. And uh, believe me, uh, you know, American is still the. I don't know if it's stereotype or statistically it's number one in education. Uh, so lots of parents believe so. Even though they know that their that society is kind of dangerous, because sometimes you see, you know, they're like gunshots and stuff in the in the U.S. But still, it doesn't stop people sending their kids over, especially when the uh, when the pandemic's over. Mm -hmm. So okay. you can say that, and TOEFL is very popular and mm -hmm. still be. I, I think it will still be in the future. Okay. I don't see any other like substitutes who can you know dominate, especially when the kid when when your we kids want to go to the U U S or North America for 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 universities, and sometimes uh, like just recent years, recent one or two years, sometimes I will advise some of my students, and uh, and to take the IELTS instead of TOEFL to apply for universities in North America. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, but that's what okay. I did because. Basically, it really is easier if for for kids who who only needs like six point five or seven to 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 get a apply for a even fine or better school. Okay. But if you want to take TOEFL, it's uh, and you want to get to a, a over a hundred, that's mm -hmm. really something. You know, that's really something. At, at least in my experience, it is. So, okay. uh, but. Still, there's a lot of students who really like see TOEFL as a good challenge, and they want to yeah. they want to do it just because they want to see how well they do in their English proficiency. And some of the students don't even want to go to university uh, universities abroad. They just yeah. you know want to test out their abilities. Okay. So they took take TOEFL, right? Yeah, and yeah, she you know the the interview I did with my with my man in in Korea, he talked about mm -hmm. how when he was young. He's still young, but when he was like a kid, they had like what they called like a TOEFL fever. And he oh. and the kids were taking TOEFL. And the la my last classroom experience, like in Korea, I was teaching TOEFL to middle school kids, right? Like okay. middle school. You know, I'm talking like for, for those of us in like Canada, like grade seven. Um, okay. And like they were taking the TOEFL. And, and, and you know, obviously it wasn't for university admissions because the, the score expired yes. in two years. And so it, it almost sounds like that's what you're describing. I mean, that's, it. that's a shocker. Yeah, that's yeah. a shocker. I mean, we got a little bit of a disconnection just now, but I get what you say. Because yeah. uh, seventh graders or eighth graders taking TOEFL lessons is not news to me because yeah. we've been teaching those things. And some of the kids, let me tell you that, fifth graders, that's the youngest mm -hmm. 
you know age where where uh, where I teach you know kids from the you know the uh from uh, they're, they're from Chengdu and also and they're not from regular Chengdu uh, like elementary school they're from the uh, international elementary school in Chengdu because yeah. there's a lot of them so the fifth graders came over to me and still uh, and, and immediately like I greeted him with uh, greeted mm-hmm. him with these English and he started talking back in English yeah. then we automatically automatically speak English throughout the whole class no yeah. pressure at all that's like yeah. a shocker to me and yeah. that's and those students are more and more so yeah. you can imagine how many stu- young and stu- TOEFL takers there will be in the future because yeah. those are the those are literally the future okay so, so yeah this is like this is great I, I love the optimism for the TOEFL test because sometimes when you're talking to people from other countries they're like yeah it's TOEFL is losing market share <laughs> Duolingo uh, Pearson but it sounds like in China people are using the TOEFL both for admissions and then just to kind of show off their English ability so they have like a, a real level they can clearly demonstrate mm-hmm. that's awesome mm-hmm. the the test changed in July as a lot of people know and the the purpose for the change, I guess, was to be more customer friendly uh, for the test takers, make it a more friendly experience, but also, I think, to sort of preserve the market share somewhat from uh, competing tests. Um, the people I've talked to, probably like 80% of them have been very positive about these changes. They're, they're very, very happy. And mm-hmm. I'm saying like 80% of test takers specifically. Mm-hmm. How about you? Are people in China feeling good about the uh, the changes to the test? Like up until now, I can assure you that like and like most people, if not all, mm-hmm. are very satisfied with the ch- with this change specifically. I know there's a lot of changes in TOEFL history, but this one is specifically, you know, friendly. Like you said, friendly, and I I would use my word bladder friendly. I mean, <laughs> it's it's shorter and it's mm-hmm. more. I mean, doable. Uh, I mean, in a uh, in April, when they fir- when they first started out that conference, when I shared the details, before that, we were panicked. We uh we panicked a lot because uh, we don't know the details. But later on, when we get to see the sample answers or yeah. sample uh, questions of the uh, TOEFL writing about the uh, specific um um academic writing uh, yeah. academic uh, discussion. discussion yeah uh, yeah discussion yeah um it's actually not that bad actually we we uh we thought that it only made the independent writing more efficient more effective like in the uh, before this change you only you you have to write a whole essay or you know the the whole article to make sure that the test examiners know you can write now you only need a paragraph to to, to make sure that they, they do that it's yeah. more effective in my in my you know consideration um as an as a teacher also you know teaching TOEFL writing I know that um, uh, the essence of writing the uh, academic uh, discussion uh, doesn't change yeah. the essence of it, right? Yeah. You have to make your opinion, your argument, then you support your argument with more details, that kind of stuff. That doesn't change. If that doesn't change, it's it's something, to, in, in my way of saying it, as simplified. Yeah. In yeah, my way. It, so, it kind of boils it down, doesn't it? Like, okay, you're right. doing the same stuff, but you're doing it in like 120 words. Yes. But one more, uh, there's one little concern about the reading part, actually, that's shortened. So the, the, the scoring way is kind of like it's bigger, or shall we say that? Like you 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 got more risk yeah. making one mistake. Yeah, yeah that's, now, that's something... Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. People are concerned, right? Like if they make one mistake, they think, oh, shoot, I'm going to lose like a point, a whole like point on my raw, on my scaled score. Yeah. I don't think that's yeah. quite the case. I think the conversion, I think the conversion between the raw and the scaled, I think it kind of prevents that from happening, maybe. But yeah, there's an argument to be, some people are like, man, my English is so good. They should make it a longer test. I can really show up. No, nah, that's crazy. But yeah, I totally, <laughs> like, I get the concern that some people have. They're like, Maybe yeah. there's my my friend Han Jun, who I interviewed previously. He referred to uh, dirty questions, and that's kind of slang that the TOEFL teachers in Korea have. Sometimes there's like a question, and it's like eh, this question's like it's it's not well designed. It's kind of tricky. It may be uh-huh. it's it's ambiguous. They call it a dirty question, and so I think people oh. are concerned. If they get like a dirty question, it's going to really, they're going to suffer for it, but we'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, at least news from the new version of Tess uh, don't really like scare people. Like I heard a lot of news where people take took the first test, first mm-hmm. version test. I'm sorry, yeah. new new version test, and like then day one. they came out and say, "Hey, I did not not bad." I mean, even though we don't have that priority to uh, of of taking a ten minutes break in the middle, yeah. you don't have to like two mm-hmm. two hours. You can hold it. You can whatever. Yeah. So well, it's it's more like to me, it's feasible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, yeah. Well, so well, I have more of... confidence actually. I have more confidence taking TOEFL than yeah. before. Okay, that's awesome. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I've probably seen about 500 academic discussion responses so far because I've been telling people, put them really? in the YouTube comments and I give them like some com- I give them some feedback. And so people are just piling in. I've seen 500. Okay. I can assure okay. you the task is not easier. Okay. People are making the same mistakes and they're pretty much getting the same scores. So it's shorter, but it's testing the same stuff. It's not going to inflate the scores. And that's that's great. Now, I will tell you another thing. I did some YouTube like polls and I get like 500 people would vote in the polls, which was cool. And then Mm -hmm. I said, do you like the shorter test? 80 percent said, yeah, I like the shorter test. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I said, what would you rather do, the academic discussion or the independent essay? 80 percent say, man, I want to do the academic discussion. Great. ETS, a success. And then I said, what would you rather have a two hour test with no break or a two hour test plus 10 minutes with a break. And they're like, give me the break. I want the break. 80% <laughs> and we're like, I want that break. They're like, I got to go to the toilet. I can't hold it. I'm like, oh, geez. Okay. 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 So, so I, I think people want that break. And maybe ETS, if you're watching, put the break I back think, in. I think you it depends on, like, let's say, let's give it a, a two to eight portion. Yeah. Okay. Like 20% of the students who's taking that TOEFL. They have a very good English proficiency, their comp- yeah. competency. So they really want to do that two hour session like along the yeah. way. They don't want to break. They don't they want their thinking training training yeah. to go, you know, in a in a smooth line. They don't yeah. want to stop. And yeah. for the eighty percent who, you know, is struggling a little bit somehow, they really wanna, you know, have a break to uh I don't know, switch, switch up, switch up their mind Think or it out. Yeah. do something else to, to, to help get, them, to get yeah. up, to get, get their mind up things. I get yeah. it. So to me, so if you ask me specifically, uh, I wouldn't want to break. I, I think yeah. the two hour works great. Oh, I think it's, and I think as from a marketing perspective, they want to yeah. say it's less than two hours now. And I get, I don't, yeah. they could just like put in the break and be like, it's less than two hours, not counting the break. I got it. Anyways, yeah. I think we've talked yeah. about this break way too much. <laughs> Let's move on. So okay. like, I, I, I love the enthusiasm. As I said a moment ago, it's like, I guess, I mean, you're enthusiastic about the TOEFL. And I guess people in China are also enthusiastic about the TOEFL. That's cool. Now, yeah. I want to talk about like tutoring in China. Now, I'm not going to talk about your methods in particular. I might invite you back for a part two, or we can you can mm-hmm. tell me how you do it. But Okay. In the country, how do people prepare for the test? Are they doing one-on-one tutoring with someone like you or me? Are they doing like group classes or are they preparing on their own, like solo style? And what's, what's the method? I'm sure the answer is all of the above, but like what's, yeah. what, what's, what's most common if you can say that? If it's most common, let me tell you that VIPs and classes are most common. I can't tell you uh, which one is even better, mm-hmm. but, but VIPs and, and classes. By VIP, you mean like, one-on-one? Yeah, one-on-one. Like uh, what I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is um, there's only a little bit of a portion of, of guys who really want to prepare uh, a TOEFL on their own. Mm-hmm. Like they're even either they're just you know too confident to do it, too confident to do it, or uh, they're just you know like uh, some some of the students don't uh, have a financial problem. They don't they they want to do it, but they don't have that budget. Mm-hmm. So set them aside. And the rest the rest of us really want to you know apply for some of the classes, either VIP or or your class session, because they don't know TOEFL that much. That's from you know a guy who have been learning English for about 16 years. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it's kind of like I, 
I, my favorite subject is, is English ever since my elementary school. So mm-hmm. I'm kind of good at it. And even after my bachelor's in English literature in China, I still have to take a uh, apply uh, uh, buy a buy a English uh, TOEFL. Um, I'm not sorry, sorry, not TOEFL. IELTS actually. I took IELTS. Oh, you took the IELTS. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I buy I I bought a, I bought a IELTS a session a whole course of uh-huh. uh, sixteen or I don't know sixty four of course sessions uh to to take the IELTS before because I took took the IELTS um. IELTS uh, for once for the first time mm-hmm. and it didn't come out good I mean the score doesn't really I don't want to mention it it's and it's an embarrassment for any major I thought my English was 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 really okay and yeah. I took the IELTS uh, without any preparation or any like VIP or class sessions from any tutoring center I, I'm not, I'm, I was that that confident and then it didn't you know turn out good so I thought maybe there was something missing so I, I pay for the courses Mm-hmm. Then I really did learn something like I I normally wouldn't think mm-hmm. of like the like the uh, the tricks mm-hmm. to trick the questions in reading yeah. or listening or you know how like the templates or shell text you said in, yeah, we in talk speaking the, we we'll call them uh, test taking strategies okay all the so, okay, all the serious okay. tutors I talk to they okay. hate the word tricks oh they they get angry oh, when I talk strategies. about strategies okay test taking okay. strategies yeah yeah. So no oh, that's that's how uh, I can't say that they're completely useless. Mm-hmm. They do help me. They did help me a lot. Mm-hmm. And later on, when I became a, a, a TOEFL teacher and and t- also teaching IELTS, I found that giving your giving most of your students the you know template or shot text or help them with certain phrasing in certain topics really mm-hmm. help them you know keep them in memory and. Remember this: your students are not all shooting for the top score. They're just yeah. one, you know, good score. Yeah. So they want yeah, a fair, exactly. fair. Yeah. So those things do help. Yeah. Okay. So to answer your original question, yes. So VIP courses and, and class sessions are really popular in China, and when students are preparing for it, I I, I love how you call them a VIP. Small amount of. Sorry, I we call them that. That's, is that, so mean, is, that's is that the, the lingo? That's how love. the lingo is used in in China. VIP classes. Yes. That's yes. Awesome. I'm going to start I didn't using. I realize that. I was talking about it. It, it was one on one. It was actually one on one. Or sometimes yeah. in some institutes, in some tutoring centers, they they offer one on two or one on three. Okay. But it's still called the VIP okay. service. At okay. least it's the VIP experiences because the teachers like me will customize our teaching according to your mistakes. Mm-hmm. Not like I'm following a regular gen- agenda, like a regular curriculum, not just to teach you whatever it's on the agenda. I don't care if you learn or not. If you don't mm-hmm. learn, that's your that's on you. That's okay. for most class sessions. But okay, I might overstate this, you know, um, uh, phenomenon because sometimes if you are a responsible teacher, like mm-hmm. I'm not saying I am, but I am. Okay, I will also be paying attention to specific uh, needs in my class mm-hmm. sessions. Yeah. So that's how we do. And just for these uh, like exclusive experiences, when you mm-hmm. pay for the services, mm-hmm. that makes a lot of students want to, you know, do these. They don't want to prepare on their own, mm-hmm. except like those students, like I said, are really good at it, mm-hmm. really good at their English. And they and they do these self-study um, mm-hmm. based on like uh, videos on availability or sometimes on YouTube if they have, mm-hmm. the, have the access. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, well. That's that answer. And I like what I like how you said. Yeah, the 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 one on one, the live tutoring is still very very popular. I mean, mm-hmm. I've attracted some amount of controversy because I've talked about just within the last year. I've talked about mm-hmm. how more students are self studying, and I've said really in South Korea. Maybe less in South Korea. South Korea is similar to China. That's a topic for another interview. But I mean, I do a lot of work with people from around the world. And one of the things I've observed or maybe imagined, according to some people, is that uh, self-study is easier now than it was in the past because we have more technology. And maybe students will have less of a need for for live one-on-one tutoring. Now, maybe I'm crazy. And that's going to be the subject of a full interview with somebody here in the future. 
But I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, so it sounds like maybe from your perspective, the, the VIP experience is still super popular and, and, and necessary. I believe it's more necessary than popular, though. It's not. It's not like the students who uh, buy my uh, who uh, pay for my one on one session really loves me as me, mm -hmm. or loves learning Tovo. They have no choices. Mm -hmm. They have no other choices. Like, if they don't pay for any services, tutoring services, they have to do it on their own. Mm -hmm. And you know, lots of these students don't have a really good English background. Okay. That's what people tell they, me. They yeah. they struggle. They struggle. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. other than other than pay for any like expertise service, mm -hmm. what can I do? Mm -hmm. Especially like Chinese students are not really proud of their average spoken English. And if I can prepare for my own uh, like TOEFL IELTS in my reading and listening, I can do that. If I can do that, mm -hmm. I'm still not really comfortable com uh, confident in my speaking mm -hmm. session. So like I have to pay for someone to talk to me in English. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I can't just, you know, do sp speak in English in my, on my own. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know if I do it, you know, up to standard or what. So okay. that's okay. why, you know, TOEFL or IELTS uh, instructions or, or, or teaching in China is kind of exclusive. It's necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So long live the TOEFL tutors. That's great. I think there's a lot of tutors watching this that are going to be like kind of happy that, that you've supported them because some of them feel that I'm not supportive enough of uh, of tutors and uh, their livelihoods. Well, I, I, get I some, believe I get some blowback. Yeah, I believe there's another reason why maybe in other countries where people have full on access to YouTubers, mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lot of like relative um, online teaching courses where people mm -hmm. can have it for free. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I have that when I was in my college year, I wouldn't even pay for my <laughs> IELTS uh, courses. I can, okay. I, cause I, my English is okay, so I can, you know, learn something based on what we have now on the internet nowadays. But a lot of the students don't even have that kind of, you know, self-study uh, uh, experience. I'm sorry, okay. ability to to okay. do so. Mm -hmm. So that's us. Awesome. Now let's let's get into the nitty gritty of like test prep. So one of the things that is notable for TOEFL prep in China is that. Students have access to uh, more stuff. Now, I'm talking specifically about two things. First of all, the TPO sets. Now, mm -hmm. TPO sets are old, retired TOEFL tests. And uh, they've been licensed out by, I guess, New Oriental, right, is, is the big license. Yes, yes. So yep. New Oriental has is, is a big tutoring company. And we're going to talk more about them in a moment because they're fascinating. Yep. But... Yep. New Oriental is probably the biggest test prep thing in China, I think. And they've they've paid money and they have like 75 retired TOEFL tests, which uh, students can access basically for a very low cost on the website. I think possibly for free. Or maybe. for free. Uh, not for free. How much is it? Or or for free. Okay, cool. I can so, assure you that at least like at least 30 and um, TPOs in the middle, yeah. in the middle part. Are yeah. for free now, yeah. like right okay. now. And if you are talking about New Oriental, but if you're yeah. registered as a student for free with mm -hmm. your cell phone number, mm -hmm. and on the website called Xiaozhan, yeah. Xiaozhan, okay, like little thing, uh, it has free access from TPO one to TPO uh, sixty six, okay, like for free. Now, if you now, right now go on that website mm -hmm. with a Chinese yeah, phone number, ahead. but what I really want to stress here that these are. These are legally purchased by by like New Orleans. Yes. These are these are, these are yes. not like these are not bootleg things. So these are these are purchased. And I think having access to all of these like seventy five odd tests, how critical is that for the test takers in China and for their preparation? And the rest um, of the world does not have me... these seventy five tests. They have okay. s much smaller <laughs> numbers and and they are a bit more costly. I think you can buy them from from the ets website in the rest of the world you can pay like 40 dollars for one one test okay so um, how if you want to ask they? how critical yes to answer your question how critical um uh, maybe this this stat might help you um mm -hmm. like you said uh we are we all knew this fact that the chinese uh, uh ha the chinese students ha have a uh a score surge just recently right yeah i believe that has something to do with it because if you have full-on free access to uh all 66 
uh, TPOs on the internet, it really helps you. If mm -hmm. you only have four, yeah. if you only have four, that's gonna run out real soon, and you you're basically repeating. So that doesn't really help you. We have free access so that um, our student, when our students uh, have done with our classes, like uh, theoretical classes on the you know tricks. I'm sorry, on the uh, strategies and stuff. Strategies. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. Like after that. that, after that, after they they need some place to practice their strategy, mm -hmm. like to put it into practice use. So mm -hmm. the TPOs, a different source of. TPOs. If you have like more than 40 TPOs, that's already a blessing. Because if you do from the first one to the last one, 41, 40th one, and then you go back to do the first one, you already forgot some of them. And then you're like doing it for a yeah. brand new like memory. So yeah. it really helps. And also these uh, online um, TPO practice sites offers you the mock test version or the mock test mode. Or the practice mode. If you're clicking in the practice mode, you see the questions and then do the, do the uh, do it. But if you're doing a mock test, it's like you're experiencing a whole new, uh, you know, mm -hmm. offline. I mean, IBD test. That's that's amazing. Were, I mean, were were you aware that like the that these were not really available outside of China? Not until you mentioned it to me. Okay. Not until like. Up to now, up till up till that point, you told me that these mm -hmm. are really exclusive. I I have been taking these free chances for granted. Like I said, I've been taking it for granted. And sometimes even me and my coworkers, we we used to work in the New Oriental and the other uh, institutions, we've been complaining about not getting enough. So it's 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 I guess this is like this is the one that like people are like. Like really, it just speaks to like how serious like the test prep industry in China is, and how serious the companies, companies. Now, when we stop recording, I do have a funny story. I'll tell you with the legal relationship between ETS <laughs> and New Oriental, and and okay. how this is something that you may already know, but it's a funny story. I'll tell you when we stop recording. They've had a funny relationship. Um, the other thing that like New Oriental offers is access to the speech reader AI and the e-rater ai yeah. and, yes. and that's something that like ets is finally sort of slowly unleashing that on the rest of the world and they've kind of done that even just within the last six months but i know like new oriental and the other big chinese prep companies have had access to this technology for quite a few years i think going back to even like 2019 yes. How critical is that? Access? Exactly 2019. Exactly 2019 when they when they first issued the uh, speech rater. Yeah. The, the 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 writing AI rating is kind of mm -hmm. com comes after it comes after, mm -hmm. but uh, speech raters definitely because I was working in, uh, I was working in a, a New Oriental when they issued this technology, and New Oriental, our our core company, and and grant us access to this um, technology like immediately, like mm -hmm. as teachers, like like as their um. Uh, registered teachers, our names are in the system, so we can have free access like in ten times a day mm -hmm. to get our um, uh, speech, or get our uh, recordings rated mm -hmm. on the on their server. They said it was the, the same server um, used in the uh, ETS to yeah, rate. Yeah, it's uh, license, again, it's it's li legally licensed, like the, uh, the licensing. I'm not the really API. sure, Mike. Well, I'm not really sure if it is the same one because we have this huge DAO. If you ask any like. A a uh, speaking teacher uh, mm -hmm. in New Oriental for the past mm -hmm. three years, they'll tell you exactly the same thing. The the, the speech reader we use uh, on our phone, like it's on our phone, you yeah. record it and then you upload it. Then like uh, after five to 10 minutes, it'll give you this uh, rate rating about like uh, 4.5, 3.5. Yeah. And, 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 and a really detailed list of um, uh, ratings on, on 12 dimensions, on mm -hmm. 12 ra uh, rating character uh, characters. Yeah. Um, and then it's really confusing for some of the uh, uh, dimensions. I'm sorry, um, like the grammar. Yeah. Specifically, it yeah. doesn't really give you this. Sometimes yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I I'm really mean. sure. I was really sure I didn't make any like grammar mistakes. Then my grammar hits the like the zero the left corner. Yeah. Like it's really bad. It's red. Yeah. Uh, it confuses me. Like, how can yeah. you judge? A grammar mistake. Maybe they they confuse grammar mistake with the uh uh or the you know hesitation. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. So well, all of the implementations I've seen 
of the of the speech rater. Yeah, they have that same problem with the grammar score and then also like the discourse coherence score. But anyways, mm -hmm. ha, I mean, so has has this speech rater access? Do you think it's been very critical to test prep in China, or are you saying eh, not as not as great? I would say it's uh, as important as a human rater. Like yeah. if I am teaching, yeah. I will rate my students speaking, mm -hmm. and definitely my advice would be much more, you know, constructive. Okay. But to make things easier for the teacher, human teachers, we use yeah. these AI technology to help us yeah. grade first, and then. Yeah. You know, and also sometimes the students are, you know, the Chinese students, usually we are, lots of them are afraid of teachers. Yeah. So they're afraid of, you know, speaking to teachers, then they use this app to see how they do, like on a general sense, they, they can, they can know that. And then they will just use some of those um, very, sh you know, surprised uh, scorings and to ask us mm -hmm. why, why, why the hell is this? So it really helped us take, a, take our pressure off. Because yeah. before that technology, I have to spend like four to five hours a day grading mm -hmm. yeah. my students' yeah. recordings, and that's a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I guess like you've answered the question, which is like, I, maybe this was actually my next question. It's like scores in China <laughs> are going up, 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 up. Like yep. that's just you look at the data; it's just going up. Is yep. Korea also up? I think China is now ahead of Korea, if my memory serves. In terms of average that, score, especially uh, that six point jump. Yeah, That's... yeah, man, you've been reading the stats, or you've been reading my blog. Yeah, there was that one. Okay, year I'm a close so follower funny. of your blog, man. Oh, uh, you yeah, and like five that. other dudes. I'm so happy. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. A there pleasure. was. What was it like? Was it 2020 or 20? I don't know what year the Chinese yeah, scores 20... just went. Yeah, 2020 yeah. or 2021. Uh, yeah. 20... Yeah, I, I guess, um, like I said, uh, the full access to the TPOs really help. And mm -hmm. also, uh, lots of the Chinese um, tu tutoring centers have been, mm -hmm. you know, using these teaching practice uh, mm -hmm. experiences to ask, you know, more experienced teachers to uh, help the younger teachers. Yeah. So our entire, like, uh, uh, teaching uh, experiences as a whole, yeah. as a general, uh, mm -hmm. is, is raising up. You yeah. can say that. So, yeah. and also, I believe that, but this doesn't really explain all of it, but it really is something confusing to me because, like, I, I get it when you increase, like, average one point or two point uh, mm -hmm. every year. Yeah. That's okay. Like, that's what China has been doing for mm -hmm. the past seven or eight years. Like, they jump from 19 to 20, average in speaking, mm -hmm. yeah. in, for, 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 for eight years. And then that one year, Six point. I mean, yeah. what happened? So maybe uh, it has something to do with other technologies, or is it because of the home version? Do you think so? When the home well, version, I think uh, that I you mean, know, it's important to know that it wasn't just China that saw that jump around that year. The rest of the world did. They also jumped. So part of it was the home edition, and part of it was we all forget. The TOEFL was shortened back in like 2019, right? You know, we all kind of forget that. It was shortened by half an hour. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, and so that also so, but... I mean, so like all these factors can can yeah. affect this 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 outcome. I mean, it yeah. kind of makes sense, but six point is still a huge jump to yeah. me. I mean. Yeah. Well, I, I yeah. And, but it's not just that one year. I mean, what we're talking about is is it increases over time. So yeah. What what I want to take away from this conversation is that there's a variety of factors. One being the robust availability of materials and technology and test okay. prep companies that are kicking ass. Um, test prep companies that are like really well run and doing great things. But also it's sort of like that kind of like the that the TOEFL fever still kind of exists and that people are, mm -hmm. you know. They're, 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 I would, really... I would say that. I would say that. Like, yeah. and for what I know, for all I know, um, in a few years when I teach, uh, when I, I taught some of the students, they told me that they were just college students who, uh, who is planning to, who was, plan who were planning to take TOEFL. And I mm -hmm. asked them, are you, are you going to take TOEFL to go abroad to study yeah. further? They said, no, mm -hmm. I just want to take up a, you know, part-time job or want to get an intern in some mm -hmm. sort of a company. 
and that's a big company, and they ask the students if they have TOEFL or IELTS score because mm -hmm. if you only have like CET four or CET six, which is Chinese English testing in China universities, yeah. where without English majors, those are not enough already. Because before that, I mean. Just about these years, after twenty eighteen, I guess uh, before twenty eighteen, uh, I don't I don't see any students, any graduate student, uh, undergrad students who want to uh, take up an internship and worries about TOEFL scores. Mm -hmm. I mean, they only use their CET like six scores, and then that's okay to get into any like corp they want to get mm -hmm. an intern at least. Mm -hmm. But now they are just you know worried about not enough, and they mm -hmm. want to. How do you use that word, uh, phrase? Uh, rat race. Uh, okay. That's how you yeah, say they want, it. They want to, right? yeah, yeah, they're in a yeah. way they want to yeah, keep up with the Joneses, as we might say. Yes, yeah, yeah okay. So, uh, that's how people do now, though. So, they want to get into intern working in China, even not even going out by taking mm -hmm. Google or IELTS. So, that's crazy to me. But, uh, I guess that puts uh, the scores average um, going up, yeah, because, um, like some of the uh, some of the students who really want to get into the you know the best companies in the company in, in the countries. They already are very good at English. They just mm -hmm. didn't take it before. Yeah. Now mm -hmm. they have to take it. So these like better test takers started mm -hmm. participating participating in this uh, TOEFL. Okay. Uh, so that might explain the huge surge in okay. average score. Yeah. Okay. So Kate, better test takers are taking it. Okay, <laughs> I dig it. Okay. Now I'm getting. Now you're you're clarifying all of what confused me. Okay. So now we're starting to understand why I'm these contemplating, are going man. I'm just guessing. It's, the gears are I in motion, like that, live on the air. That's be it, but that's that's how I guess. I mean, that ends things. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a lot of factors going in. You know, I guess what I want to say is, if if somebody is watching this video and they're mm -hmm. in like India, which is probably, as we mm -hmm. talked about, maybe number one market for TOEFL, maybe number two. Yep. What I'm saying is if you're in India and you've got like a lot of money, you have to do the same thing as New Oriental or one of the other Chinese firms. You you got to like get 75 TPOs. You got to get speech rater access via API, e-rater access, put together a yes. company and you'll yes. you'll do the same thing, right? Yes. You'll have I mean, success. if it's a huge company, you you too, man. I mean, you'd be doing even better. I mean, I why don't would you do so, anyways? Because because well, I do not have ten million dollars. Wow, is that, does it mm. take that much? Oh, okay. That was just off the top of my head, but yeah, this stuff is not cheap. Um, I now that we've talked about all the amazing stuff, I want to talk about like some of the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. One of the complaints I get from test takers in China is that booking a seat at a test center is like really hard. Like they sell out in advance uh, and they, they, sometimes they're even going to resellers who like jack yes. up the price. Now, keeping in mind, yes. China is one of the most expensive places to take the TOEFL. I don't know if you know this, yeah. but it is one of the most expensive. I don't, because maybe you don't look at the prices in the rest of the world. It's expensive, uh, but you, you got to book I, these remember. Remember, I look at I look at your your blogs. I know yeah, yeah. So you, you've seen it. You've okay, seen the prices. The it, like you can see, oh, it's like one hundred and eighty-five dollars in India and three hundred and fifty dollars in China. Oh, anyways, oh, okay. so the the challenge is that like the test centers sell out like months in advance, and people are like clicking the mouse there like at midnight, you know, just to get a seat, and then resellers are reselling the reservations somehow. I don't know how that works. Yeah, because that doesn't make sense well, to me. And and it's also they're Good. jacking up the price to like at stratospheric levels. Is this still an issue? It's still a big issue here, and maybe you make it sound like uh it's a bad thing, but to me it goes both ways. Uh, I was first there, of but... all, first first of all, uh, selling like um, selling out these uh, seats uh, way ahead of time really hurts some of the test takers if they are not familiar with the uh, registration process they don't mm -hmm. know that things need to be you know purchased way ahead of it right like yeah. to me it's usually uh two or three months um in the first half year and if you're going to the second half year you have to even go make a purchase before uh, uh, three or four months even five months before and mm -hmm. even then it's risky yeah. That you want to get a seat that is your ideal test day. And then um, 
these uh these resellers okay they you know really they do jack up a price but uh i can't say it, they jack up a price maybe you're mistaking them for regular resellers for the, you know the opera okay. singers <laughs> tickets oh, they we're also baseball they, baseball they 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 don't either they don't jack up the price of the okay. test uh test price they they sell set sell to you at the same price which is like 2000 one two thousand and one hundred, I guess okay. two thousand one hundred okay. in RMB in RMB. Yeah. Now, what's the but point? they they ask you for a commission price. Oh, oh, it's a commission. Okay, you <laughs> yeah, okay, 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 okay. I know how it works. You yeah. ask you ask me for my service, like you ask yeah. me for my service, and I have to you know make effort, like I have to yeah, stay yeah. up night, stay up at yeah, night, yeah. and help you take the seats. If you want a one week ahead, I have to you know stay up at night and okay. do the six days straight. Okay, staying yeah, up. Yeah. So that takes a lot of energy of me. So I have to okay. you know, ask you for something and then okay, you pay cool. a fixed price. And that usually depends on how um, urgent you want your yeah. Yeah, yeah. seats. Like one month ago, one month away, that's yeah, like yeah. one price. And if it's more, like it's uh, one week away, okay, yeah. it's more expensive. Okay. Did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That, actually, that brings back fond memories when I was getting train <laughs> tickets in China back in like 2000, 2006, yes. I don't know. I took the train to uh, Tibet, you know, and okay. uh, I was getting tickets from Garamud to Lhasa. I don't know if I, I'm okay. pronouncing those names wrong, but you get the point anyways. Yep. And uh, yeah, to get to get those train tickets, it was the same thing. You had to get, get a guy who would be like, you know, getting to the front yeah. of the line. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty, yeah, I remember. I, I get it. Okay, so they're, can, they're doing a- terrible. Yeah, they're doing a service and they're getting they're getting paid for their service. Okay, that's, yes. I, I don't want to. Okay, so but you want to call it a commission? Yeah, this is yeah, a commission. Yeah. That's just pay for it. That's okay. okay. And if you are doing it, like we have been in cooperated with uh, certain resellers. If you mm -hmm. want to, if you cooperate with them for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. you regularly offer students uh, to get their uh, and resale tickets. Then you might get a discount sometimes if they know it's you, it's your students, they might get yeah. a discount. But that doesn't really happen too much because usually like we don't we don't positively or actively mm -hmm. offer our students these chances. We ask them to, you know, you have to prepare ahead of time. We yeah. we, we told them mm -hmm. if you can't get the seats, that's on you. And Take sometimes responsibility, darn yes, it. Yes, yes. <laughs> So okay. we we've been getting students, you know, uh, missing their uh, application day and then oh, gap gosh. a year and do it again in the mm -hmm. ne next year, and luckily those are young students, so they have one year to waste. Okay. We'll give a fuck. Okay. Okay. Mm. Now, um, I so I guess you, you said at the beginning, and maybe it's a good thing. And I don't think I think we got sidetracked as always, but I think it, maybe it's a good thing because it kind of slows down people's like it, it forces them to spend more time preparing, right? Because they can't yep. just jump out and take the test right away. They have to. Yep. I mean, they have to wait three months, and so yeah, okay, cool, okay. Mm -hmm. Also gives them okay. time to buy, you know, the courses. Yeah. Now, like. And I understand all the test centers are like the IELTS, Pearson. Um, mm -hmm. You might recall that like the universities in the UK, like they were like, yeah, we're not going to take uh, Pearson home edition scores anymore. And all of the students were like, oh, I guess I better retake the test at a Pearson test center. And they're like, yeah, I'm going to have to fly to another country to find a test center that's available. Maybe. So it's not just TOEFL. It's why is it like why? Why? Some enterprising business person why don't they just open a whole bunch of test centers like well what's the deal like why don't they have more seats like in korea here i could take the test like tomorrow and there's plenty of seats like within walking distance of my house maybe like, well, what's maybe up in korea maybe in korea uh, they, first of all they don't have any they don't have that much of a population of test takers and mm -hmm. then like the offers is always more than the demands right okay. so in china it's the other way around so lots of students want to take the test and only a few staff members and a few test centers that is legitimate for for use. So yeah. yes, that's it. I don't and know. that's why we have a population crisis. What do you mean? I mean, this is like, it's common What sense, I'm saying man. is like some dude should be like, I'm going to open up a test center and I'm going to make a fortune because supply and but demand. Anyway, I, I again, don't Again, again, like lots of the test centers in China has has to be legitimized by 
like lots of them are in the universities yeah. Yeah. and it's not easy to get i mean yeah. i guess it's not easy to apply for ad, mm-hmm. but but pri- private contractors yeah. yeah you know what i mean so mm-hmm. so that's that's how it is because yeah. socialism country uh yeah and i maybe, think what yeah. what it's important to note here and we won't get too far into it but the TOEFL in China is not exclusively like an ETS thing. It's also ETS uh, in partnership with what, what is it? The National Examination uh, Authority. NEA. I guess you said it more than I know. I mean, NEA. Yes, NEA. Yeah. So and it's not it, the they ETS is in a relationship with the NEA, they control it. which is yeah, they control yeah, it. which is in which is you know a function of of, of the government in China, right? So. Yeah, I believe it's a kind of a uh, corporative uh, relationship. Uh, yeah. I, so do, do you think do you think ETS answers to any or which one any EA answers to ETS? Do you think they answer to each other, or do you think they operate on their own and then just share information? And I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know think because so. I, I don't think it, I, maybe that's not the correct way of of phrasing how the relationship <laughs> yes. is. Because I mean, you know, like. I just think IELTS has the same, it's N-E-E-A, and I'm sure Pearson, whatever. So I think, I don't know, Uh, if you wanted, like, it's just, I think it's, I would almost think of it as like a a regulatory body, but like, this is, this is way too like inside politics. I don't know. And like, this is the deal, right? ETS entered China in 1981, so. But again, um, you know, if if they're not, if they're incorporated with each other, how come that, as a Chinese test taker of TOEFL, I can get registered uh, mm-hmm. uh, on NEEA. Like I, yeah. re- I can register a a, a TOEFL test mm-hmm. on NEEA and pay with like RMB. Yeah. Or I can just go freely on the ETS official website and get a register there as an English speaking uh, or 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 overseas. Uh, I yeah. don't know what's that. Uh, overseas account. Yeah. I can do that yeah. without a VPN. Yes. Yeah. And I, I, I would know. just pay for with my I would pay with my visa uh, in in uh, in a Hong Kong I don't know bank account. Yeah. So it, it also works. So yeah, yeah. It's really confusing. I mean, like if they can offer both opportunity opportunities to get registered, why why use two? Like you can just like dominate. You can play Monopoly with NEA. <laughs> I think, ETS I think it all goes back portal. to the deal, whatever deal ETS made in 1981 when they really? when they entered. Yeah, ETS entered China in 1981. That's the first oh. time the TOEFL was offered. I don't know that. TOEFL had, I don't know the that. TOEFL had existed for like since like 1964. And so it took a while before they got into China. And and mm-hmm. IELTS, I think, followed a little bit later. I mean, okay. I guess that's, that's the deal they made. Uh, and they have to stick with it. And I think my guess is that part of the deal is that ETS does not get all the money. I'm thinking some mm. of the money is staying with the NE, and that's good, right? Because it's staying in the country. Like you want the money to stay in the country. That's like, like that's good. You don't want all the money going so, back to New Jersey. Is that the reason why China pays more? And Chinese student take pays more. Uh, don't ask me. To, to... I, I can't tell you. I don't know. But, but this... it doesn't make sense because that whole lot of like a two thousand one hundred RMB goes mm-hmm. directly to the EDS. What's there to let? What's there left to left for uh, uh, NEA? What's well, uh... NEA collects the money. I mean, you're you're registering on their website. They're collecting the money, so they're just collecting it, and ETS gets whatever they negotiated. I guess. I mean, oh, that makes sense. Now makes this sense. conversation is interesting to about five people watching the video. So we will leave it at that. Are oh, you doing it uh, online? Oh my god! Are you doing a live live video yeah, yeah. stream? Oh god! No, no, no! Nobody's watching live. This is recording. Believe me, I'm going to edit out all of the bad stuff, oh, okay. including okay, you okay. swearing about ten minutes ago. Thanks a lot for that. Okay. And I, I'm I kidding, but I yeah, I got to edit that out, or YouTube's going to have a fit. Yeah. So, anyways, but I mean, like, okay, this. I mean, I guess that's why I'm doing these interviews. I want to understand how testing works in countries around the world Mm -hmm. and the neea thing is to me and like five other people on the planet is very interesting like i would love i would love to see the contracts that ets signed when they entered the chinese market back in 1981 i would love good luck getting that those would make me so happy and and oh 
Yeah, and the the legal relationship between ETS and New Oriental, man. Maybe I'll tell you live at the end of the video when when nobody's watching. If anyone's okay. interested, maybe stick around to the end. I'll tell you that funny, funny story. Um, okay. So you color me intrigued. Yeah, you and five other people. So I guess we've we, we've kind of got we've got a picture of of test prep in China and TOEFL and and all the stuff that's going on. Now, one story that's really fascinating, actually, to more people, and it got a lot of press coverage, like even like New York Times back in like February of 2021. Uh, something okay. happened uh, with the testing companies, including the famous New Oriental, which we keep referring to, and it wiped them out. Like okay. New Oriental was traded on the New York Stock Exchange, and they went from like, I don't know, like $150 a share down to like $10 a share. Okay. And I, I'm sure the same happened. They're traded on the Beijing Stock Exchange. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, in a nutshell, if you could summarize it in like two minutes, what did the what happened in China to wipe out the test prep companies? And how did that affect you as like a TOEFL teacher working for one of them? So uh, if I can put this as, you know, general as possible. Uh, However you like, really. I worked, I worked in New Oriental for about three or four uh, years. And, and it happens we got our business got caught in this policy okay that you said about that you know our government our well, educational department policy? to china uh they try to um uh, forbid uh, any any uh tutoring companies on the market that offers uh students um uh, tutorings or teachings about their chinese subjects in mm -hmm. schools especially yeah. especially all the way from the elementary school to um high schools so they're, so they're, they're sort of banning but, or would you say they're banned they ban yes, the tutoring of young kids to high school they don't allow they don't allow any extracurricular uh, tutoring to those students mm -hmm. who have needs you yeah. know in these subjects like let me say let's say chinese math or the, you know the regular english courses in high schools or elementary schools and then uh, that goes on you know, for other subjects like uh, physics or science uh, subjects or the literal art, uh, liberal art, science, uh, sorry, subjects. And then um, why it affected us as TOEFL teachers or IELTS teachers um, is because uh, uh, as that kind of, you know, policy came out the first few months, especially the whole society is, you know, can we say roughhousing or it's going viral it's going crazy uh, okay. like parents there are a lot of parents you know clapping for it they're applauding mm -hmm. this policy because okay, they, so they, they a lot of parents liked the policy yeah like the policy because they are the ones who petition to the center to the center government mm -hmm. and then because their kids are not getting these extra help mm -hmm. and they they're not you know they're hating the other kids who can afford these helps and they're getting it mm -hmm. and then the other half, of course, the oppo op opposers, I don't know, or objectors. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm the opposition word. to the change. Yeah, yeah, the opposition. Yeah, they they really hated this policy because they, they were like, my kids are, are struggling in school. Like, mm -hmm. it's not exactly, it's not all his fault, right? Like, some of the subjects are really hard, especially when it, when it comes to high schools. So these slow learners really need these extra help outside of classes. Mm -hmm. But as our country is banning all access to these things, I mean, it really hurt their, hurt their game and they're really bad about, uh, bad about uh, uh, sad about these policies. And also, let me let me round, uh, go back. Um, at that moment, some of our TOEFL uh, courses or IELTS courses, uh, you know, we're teaching English basically. So, the grammars, the words, they're even harder than what they're learning in high school, let alone, you know, middle schools. Mm -hmm. So some of the parents saw these opportunities as like, hey, they don't they don't guard the, you know, international teachings, international tests. They don't guard mm -hmm. it. So why don't we just assign our kids to these courses? Mm -hmm. And when I assign these courses, I will tell my TOEFL teachers exactly that my kids here are not taking the TOEFL. Mm -hmm. They're here to, you know, learn English. To okay. 
level up their English as a, a language tool. Mm -hmm. If they can level it up, then they go back to their regular high school classes that take the English courses. It's much easier. It's like you're dominating. It's like an NBA player playing mm -hmm. in the sub leagues. You know, okay. they want to do that, and it and they really did. I mean, after taking the TOEFL, even the pre TOEFL sessions, it really helps. Lots mm -hmm. of the new words, lots of the uh, you know funny topics. Yeah. Uh, and from the uh, you know the extra uh, from the overseas, uh, we we uh, we take some of those courses from the uh, uh, imported uh, teaching materials. Mm -hmm. It's really funny. So um, it's useful and uh, it really hurt our game because we can't offer that kind of you know uh, contract. Mm -hmm. Saying that we're teaching in high schoolers or middle uh, or elementary school students about English. We can't say mm -hmm. we're teaching English anymore. Mm -hmm. We're offering later, we're still, you know, bypassing these, you know, uh, complaints. We're saying that we're offering um, uh, a integrated ability uh, promotion courses. That's how mm -hmm. we loosely translate that. Um, that's like, I'm leveling up this person as a person, mm -hmm. which includes a foreign language. Mm -hmm. That's how we say it. So we can still offer courses teaching okay. high schoolers or middle schooler or like you said, the seventh graders. Okay. And then and then um even we do that, we still get a lot of, you know, like complaints and a lot of um reports saying that like New Oriental or the other other um big companies still offering, still breaking the rules, breaking the policies. So our our um Leaders, leadership, they they're kind of um, skating on thin ice here, mm -hmm. so they kind of shut down, shut down lots of um, uh, branches, mm -hmm. only offering the domestic courses. Mm -hmm. they shut, they're shutting down. That that kind of shutting down is enormous, and that kind mm -hmm. of proportion really is the main cause of the uh, stock market plummeting of the mm -hmm. New Oriental that you that you talked about, and the and other, then and the other firms. And, and, and our branch in New Oriental yeah. is actually called the international teaching. It's not domestic teaching. So our our branch doesn't really af are not are not affected mm -hmm. uh, so seriously, so seriously. So we're still allowed to open for business, and still there will be IELTS demands or TOEFL demands. We mm -hmm. still take these students. We teach them, but we're still kind of you know offering courses for um, for those students who claim to come here and level up their foreign language ability mm -hmm. okay that's it that's that's how we phrase it we can't okay. just say yeah come here and learn something you can take in a chinese high school okay. graduate test that's that's forbidden so so i guess the toefl prep and the ielts prep it, it was not affected by the law it's still allowed and so people are kind of using allowed. that as a Hey, I'll do this as yeah. as an English course. Yeah. Okay. Later on, later on, we figured out that the policy doesn't really affect the, this market. But mm -hmm. at the beginning, like I said, in the first few months, mm -hmm. first half year, yeah, we're definitely like our leadership doesn't really get the whole idea of how this works. So they're like treading on thin ice. Like I said, they're really careful. So they kind of, you know, and take and um, cancel some of the contracts. They paid mm -hmm. a fine. Okay, they canceled yeah. some of the uh, contracts. They're saying that okay, we're not we're not currently offering these courses to you anymore. So you mm -hmm. have to think about some some other ways. But later, uh, we found out that this really just affects the the domestic courses, uh, and the international tests are mm -hmm. still going on. We okay. still have demands, and that doesn't uh, affect us. So uh, yeah, the business continues. And the other part and. Um, uh, the other reason, major reason for the uh, stock market plummeting of the New Oriental is because um, of the uh, relationship between the China and America. That mm -hmm. that really is something that I think uh, plays an important role in it. Because mm -hmm. at that moment, you know, it really the, the relationship has hit the history low yeah. of, of the entire you know relationship uh, ever since 1970. I don't know mm -hmm. when when do we get connection. I mean, I guess, I guess 70s, that was, 70s, that was yeah. when Nixon, so, when Nixon went yeah, to China. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly, exactly, with Mao, with Chairman Mao. So, yeah. 
So I think that's the like the worst relationship we can have at that moment. So during the pandemic, because the the U.S. Is, has been and the international has been blaming China for starting out this thing. So really, our parents uh, have been heard. Can mm-hmm. I say that our parents have been heard? Like, first of all, you're blaming us for something you know that is ambiguous, and second, we heard a lot, lot of reports about the. U.S. society being unstable, like there's a mm-hmm. lot of like, you know, robbing and gun shooting and like literally lots of parents came to me and said, hey, we want to shift gears. We want to shift our lanes and to apply, assign our kids to the U.S. Oh, sorry. U.K. I'm sorry. U.K. OK, wanna, so people were actually understand. changing their plans. Yeah. Yes. Like some of the students are even taking TOEFL courses for, I mean, half the course, half the half the sessions and then switch to IELTS and keep keep learning and take IELTS and go to UK. That's okay. normal at that moment. Mm-hmm. So I guess that's uh, something that really hurt our game. So I've been majoring, uh, I've been in charge of TOEFL speaking uh, for most of my uh, career uh, back in New Oriental. So uh, we don't get as much students as, as the IELTS group. Hmm. That's normal. So yeah. Okay. And then um, with the, uh, you know, the uh, declaration of the uh, I don't know the dismiss of the of the pandemic, mm-hmm. and then our market came back, and at least at this year in this year, um, both TOEFL and I students are rushing in, okay, and start taking yeah so with so revive. Mm-hmm. yeah I was actually yeah so I get I mean I guess it doesn't come as a surprise but I guess during the during the Trump administration, when when the relationship was obviously, as you said, at an all time low, people kind of changed their plans. Maybe they're going to the UK, even Australia, maybe Canada. Yes. With with the change of government in the US now with the Biden that's administration, my, that's are my, people that's my guess. That's yeah. my guess. And but it's are people kind of going obvious? Mm-hmm. Are, are people more enthusiastic about the United States as a destination now that the Trump is no longer president? Well, I can't say for sure. I can't say for sure. I mean, the relationship doesn't really improve anything no. anymore. Yeah, it no. doesn't improve. But um, at least I, uh, if it's if I remember correctly, uh, last year I saw uh, a few uh, tweets. You can say you know on the WeChat blog mm-hmm. that uh, the Chinese uh, education department has rekindled the relationship of sending. Of, or, or sign a contract with the U.S. saying that they allow more, you know, inter interaction with on the uh, educational level and the mm-hmm. other like economic level, like they open it up. Okay. They just don't see eye to eye on the political level, but uh, they allow more exchanging of students and uh, mm-hmm. and also, I mean, those are the signals. I can't say for sure. Like I'm not expert on that one. So mm. I guess after those news has been ex- been issued. Um, more and more parents are sending their kids back in the U.S. and also Canada. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the the number of international students going to Canada is, I think, currently is at an all time high. Um, really? Okay. It's, it's never been higher. It's it's huge. So it's that may change in the future. But for right now, yeah, Canada is a huge destination, and um, uh-huh. not as many. The number one country sending students to Canada is India, but China's probably a close number two. So why is that though? Why? Why? Canada? Why? Why? why Canada? Why is, yeah, why Canada? As the if you have access to North America, why Canada before uh, U.S. Um, I mean, there's the circumstances are always different. Uh, one thing that makes Canada a somewhat appealing destination is that following your university studies. It's fairly easy. I don't want to use the word easy, but it's possible to to get into like permanent residence. Oh, um, and I think it's easier well, in Canada I, than in other countries. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So in other well, that countries, is appealing. You, that is quite that appealing. Is appealing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you're, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe some of your clients in China may not know that. So if they're looking for a permanent residence status you can you can send them to a canadian school so so what is that like uh after i graduate from like a 
grad school, mm -hmm. I'll keep working for about like one or two years and I get permanent. Yeah, something like that. But it doesn't have to be grad school. You could just go to like, you know, bachelor, you get your bachelor's degree. Um, oh, really? So is, yeah. it, is it also easier if I just invest in Canada with a lot of money if I'm a like a, let's say a. Uh, that's a question I can't answer because that's beyond my abilities. But I think the I think that the ability to get residents based on investment in Canada, I believe that has been diminished in recent years. Really? So it's okay. not it's not quite as feasible as it was in the past. But that's that's way okay. beyond my area of expertise. Okay. So I don't know I that. Comment on that. Yeah. Okay. So know that. that's that makes Canada a destination. Um. I'll definitely keep what? that in mind if the next time somebody asks, come up with a question. I'll definitely yeah. keep that in mind. So, yeah, man. That's I mean, I know Canada's a, a decent country. That's where I'm from originally. I kind of like it. Is it um is it is it is it viable? Okay, I'm sorry to cut you cut you off. No, no, go is ahead. It viable, uh, to, if I'm a let's say I I'm from a rich family and uh, and my parents already invested in China and they I'm sorry, they already invested in Canada and they got the permanent uh, residency there. Then they, you know, get me over to go to any like high school. Then I will apply for a university in the U.S. And would that be easier than if I just live in China and apply for universities in the U.S.? Um, probably easier only in the fact that if you do your high school education in English, then you don't have to submit TOEFL and IELTS scores. So that that could make it easier. Yeah. So as long as I got the you know GPA of in, in any of my high school in, in in Canada, then apply for a university in the U.S. That that'll be easier. Uh, I don't I don't need TOEFL. Yeah, well you do have to do like the entire high school. You can't do like one year at the end. You would probably but, I think have to do the whole high school. What if I get my diploma? Uh, do do I uh, do I get my a diploma if I do one year in high school in Canada? You do will get a diploma, sure. Yeah, but you're not going to be exempted from the TOEFL. Oh, okay, yeah. makes sense. I thought so the diploma not, says everything. So nah, no, nah, it's not just the diploma. You do need because the because we got students because we got students, you know, high schoolers, uh, who went to the Chinese high school for two years and then go to Canada for another one or two years in Canada, not full, mm -hmm. yeah. and then apply for U.S. Uh, universities. So yeah, they would they... probably need a TOEFL, but there's always exemptions. There's, a, I mean, there's there's always things like it's it's not like clear cut, but yeah, they would probably okay. need a TOEFL if they just did like two okay. years. But maybe I guess not. It depends on how good their English is. Yeah, I mean, maybe, and they might just like I don't know that they, they might sneak through. I don't know, but generally they do require like <laughs> four years of high school to get an exemption. You okay. really can't do with one okay. or two. Um. Okay. What? Here's one thing that i noticed mm -hmm. and we talked about this you sound like a dude who grew up in the u.s like your accent it's like okay how did you like what but you grew up in china you did your schooling in china your bachelor's yep. i know you did go to florida for a couple years for a master's degree yeah two years two years for master's in florida state university florida in 2000 what's, what's yeah. What, yeah what year what year 2000 what? 2012, 2012. 2012. From 2012 okay. to uh, 2014, I was in Florida okay. State. Yes. And I got my what, master's. What's in... the secret to like, how do how can someone, I mean, maybe that's the secret, but how can someone get like an amazing accent? Because that matters on the TOEFL a lot. What did you do? Uh, yes. I mean, oh, I appreciate you saying that accent matters. I mean, a lot accent of matters, students, my friends. A lot of, yeah. lot, of, lot of tutors and teachers in China or have been telling have been telling their their test takers that accent doesn't matter <laughs> you mm. can you can have a strong accent and still get scores i mean that nah, doesn't really matters. go that way yeah yeah if you want to get a higher score you definitely have to practice your accent and i've been doing that not because i'm taking TOEFL or ielts that's way before that i was uh i believe i was in uh sixth or seventh grade before i started you know really noticing how accent my accent differs because before that i was like following my and elementary school teachers and they all have an accent chinese accent which is you yeah. know chinglish and mixing up all kinds of accent and they don't differentiate they pay more attention on and you know just practicing i'm um, sorry conversation and grammar so i noticed that uh what they what they're saying uh, uh 
differs greatly uh, from what I heard in my uh, like the recordings in my textbooks. I mean, those mm -hmm. are from the you know American uh, recorders, and I noticed that I can't just you know do that. I have to follow the decent you know the native ones. So I started out like really just mimicking what I heard in the tapes. At that moment, we were using tapes, not even CDs. Mm -hmm. right. So, so that's how I really got into this. And the more I sound like native accent, like the American accent, I've been practicing it. The, the more I feel, uh, you know, ach achieved. I mean, self assured and stuff, because mm -hmm. it set me aside. Because it set me aside from the other classmates. Whenever I say something, they all look at me and say, "Wow, that really sound good." It sound yeah. like it sounded like um what we heard in the textbook. So. The more confident I get, the more intri intrigued I get into, you know, mimicking or imitating this one, and the better my English gets, because I I noticed that the the more precise you sound like native speaker, the easier you remember those vocabularies, because you can just say them out whilst writing it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I really got into this. And later on, I started listening to when my high school high school years, I started out uh, listening to you know more uh, English songs and watching more like uh, American TV series or mm -hmm. movies and and keep learning. Okay. That's how I get. Yep. That's, I mean, hey, I, I guess it's worked. And so I guess the, the logical question is when your students come to you and they're like, I got to improve my accent for the TOEFL, like what do you tell them to do? Is there like a, a, uh, a self-study method or a technique shadowing? I don't know. Yes, you can say that shadowing is something we definitely will say to our students, and it's yeah. it's it's proved useful yeah. somehow. Okay, yeah. but not not all. So I'll definitely tell them some methods like this, and also I have other like methods that I you know tried these years mm -hmm. that my own personal experience, like also mimicking uh, what they see or heard here in on the on, in the movies and stuff and also slow practicing it's called slow practicing you have to slowly adapt your tongues and your lips to the the, the linking or you know the explosive sound in the in english that we don't have in our mother tongue mm -hmm. so you have to slowly adapt to it and then speed up and practice until your lips your tongues and your uh your 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 mouth get used to it the muscles get used to it like mm -hmm. the the width and length how you you open your mouth and stuff you have to practice mm -hmm. to perfection that's how i you know advise my students if they have interest in that i'll tell them exactly how a native speaker would would sound like but for most test takers they don't usually need that kind of level to accent to, to get mm -hmm. higher scores and hopefully yeah. you know that so yeah. they, they're allowed to have accents but mm -hmm. my point is that your accent cannot impede the listeners intelligibility yeah that's how i would draw the line if you really like yeah. if you say something with a chinese accent that i even as a chinese i don't even understand then i have to tell you mm -hmm. like some of the you know some of the, some of my students would say to daughter do you know what it is what daughter no you see you don't understand predator no. oh shoot okay <laughs> Pred predator okay predator predator okay yeah, yeah, they don't pick up the the word stress or you know how they pronounce how they yeah. exactly pronounce the uh the vowels. So, I would say that if you say predator, like mm -hmm. with a Chinese accent, predator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, to an American ear, that's still uh you know yeah. discernible, right? That's yeah. still discernible. Yeah. But if you say predator mm -hmm. or predator, mm -hmm. that would really confuse yeah. them, and yeah. they will think too much, and that that's not acceptable. So the... my if you ask me if I can teach my students accent that's where i draw the line if you don't have a you know uh, if you don't have a unclear pronunciation you're good mm -hmm. the more important thing is fluency definitely so mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> yeah the, so. the term that i use with the students is i use extra effort and i say does does this require extra effort from the grader and if it does then that's a problem yeah, that's extra effort is actually what they said in the scoring rubric, right? Extra I think so, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Or it, it impedes listeners' intelligibility. That's how I, you know, if yeah. if you say something that is like if you your voice is too too low, mm -hmm. that, that the recording doesn't really catch it. Mm -hmm. And the, the more noises around you, you know, there's like 30 or 40 students talking with you. If you mm -hmm. don't speak too much mm -hmm. loudly, then the listeners recording might not hear 
fine yeah. and then that's that's the docking yeah. so those are things we can yeah okay cool <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's a struggle uh it takes a lot of work uh, and i guess another thing that you've made clear and same with the last interview i did with hanjun is that time effort time effort time effort you gotta you gotta put in the effort you gotta put in the time and then you can get your total scores um yes i think we're gonna kind of wrap it up i yeah. think we've been talking for like an hour and a half what mm. a generous what a generous contribution to the to the channel thank you so okay. much um my huge pressure my pleasure let me well, okay now that everyone's staying around to the end uh, you guys can all turn off the video i'm going to tell the funny little new oriental story that made me laugh um <laughs> okay. and this will be news to you yeah. back in the 1990s uh new oriental was allegedly stealing content from ets now oh they denied it they denied it and i trust they're all good people they didn't i don't think they stole it but ets accused them of stealing the content and they took them to court in china and ets won can you believe it ets won in a chinese court against new oriental this was in 2001 i think so the stealing is like physical right like physically stealing things i mean plagiarizing from... i don't know what they mean by stealing i mean they accused them of illegally using ets content that was the accusation i knew that they sent teachers in and take the test memorize everything and come out and you maybe know maybe that's what they were doing anyways i don't i mean i i'm not gonna besmirch the fine gentlemen at new oriental i would never <laughs> they're, they're all good people but anyway so okay. ets took them to court in china and won which shocked me i mean an american company winning in the chinese court super and new oriental paid a, a penalty to ets i think it was like one and a half million dollars Wow. And that was not the end of it. I guess at some point, someone in New Oriental or ETS was like, let's put this trouble behind us. Instead of, and star. Oh. instead of like illegally using our content, why don't you legally use our content? We'll just sell it to you. And, and the then we both win. New Oriental can afford yeah, and, oh and that, that, I mean, basically is the origin story of the TPOs to me, right? Like, oh my God, they is just came TPO starts. Well, I mean, to my, I don't know like what they started. I don't know when they started selling the TPOs because probably sometime later, but basically they, they put their legal dispute behind them and they just came to an agreement where they both win, which is, you know, pretty cool, right? I mean, I mean, it always confuses me why ETS doesn't allow their materials, like uh, legit materials, to 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 be used otherwise by by other test takers. They do know that most test takers are non English speaking people, mm. right? I mean, it, it's a question of, of money they... and finances. So I mean, that's it's just yeah, a question of I money, mean... right? So I mean, somebody needs to license the tech. Anyways, I thought that was very yeah. funny that that at one point they had an adversarial legal relationship. But now they have a loving, financial, mutually beneficial relationship. You know, this is international cooperation. I love it. Anyways, um, that's uh, I believe that's this a... is kind of a interesting, you know, way of because in China we have a saying like uh, enemies before friends. I mean, you uh, to become friends, you two have to fight first. Yeah, that's, that's what that's they did. That's an old Chinese saying. <laughs> that's what they did. It's really, they like, it's a coincidental, right? Yeah, and now everybody wins. I mean, the students win by getting material. Glad, New I'm Oriental wins by selling I'm materials in ETS. But everybody wins. It's it's amazing. I love it. I'm glad they um, hashed things out. They did. Yeah, they did. They went from fighting in court to having a mutually amazing. Do, um, do you think do you think that's what not happening? What what not happened for the other countries where they don't have enough access to TPOs? Maybe well, the they other, don't fight with it. <laughs> The other countries do not have such a robust test preparation industry. Really? Yeah, they don't have but, they, they don't have these knew, companies. But that I knew that have. like at least in, in Vietnam, like mm -hmm. some of the South Asian countries, mm -hmm. they also have huge TOEFL or IELTS takers. Yeah, they do, but they, they don't they, have they, the companies. They don't have the companies really? supporting they have smaller companies. They don't have okay. the big giant companies supporting test takers. 
like okay. like you do. That's the thing. Okay. New Oriental is such okay. a big company that they made a movie about the founding of the company, which was, as you know, was a uh, yes, was yes, a comedy. Yes. I don't know if it was a. I didn't see it, and maybe you didn't see it, but it was. I don't know. This is, I didn't see it. I knew it. It was really good. It was based on like a kind of biography of the yeah. uh, of the founder of the New Oriental. Yeah, kind of like we'll that. have to. I'll watch it. You watch it, and then we'll come and we'll do a a, a review of the movie here on the YouTube channel. But yeah, it's mostly in Chinese, so I don't know yeah, if you yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you find yeah. the translated version. I, maybe I can download not. it for maybe. you if you want. <laughs> You know, maybe that one's it. never been translated. <laughs> maybe there's no. Anyways, um, uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. going to bring yeah. you back for an interview again, maybe like in a couple of months. And we might talk about test techniques, maybe if you're up for it later on in the far future. Yeah. Um, and I'm if good. Anyone, I'm good. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And if anyone wants to get in touch with Martin, uh, the contact information, as I said, will be in the video description. And Leave a comment in the YouTube video here and uh, I'll answer it. Or maybe he'll answer it. Somebody will answer it. And uh, I'll definitely answer the questions if somebody, you know, when I upload this video to Billy Billy in Chinese video websites, if somebody okay. left a comment, I'll definitely answer it. Okay. okay cool. I'll definitely answer the question. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. I hope. And if you're watching this like on Billy Billy, uh, send me a note. I notice my videos all get uploaded to Billy Billy, which is fine. And they get more okay. views on Billy Billy than they do on YouTube, which always. But, but you have that. to find a way to send me this video. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. going to be huge. And I'll give you the I also file. can answer questions for, from commentators uh, in the YouTube channels. I can browse through it sometimes. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Cool. 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 Yeah. Uh, let's leave it at that. Uh, this video yep. is super long, but it's really exciting. Um, Wrap up. <laughs> everybody, keep watching. I'm going to talk to some uh, teachers and, and test prep people in uh, other countries. So uh, keep watching. Um, Martin, thank you so much. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank it. you again for coming. Uh, I totally okay. appreciate it. Okay, no I'll problem. Talk to it's you. my pleasure. Yeah. Okay, I'll talk to you later, man. Take care. Time. Bye. Yeah, take care.